This morning, we're back at Lalibela Airport. We'll be flying back to Addis Ababa. After lunch, we board our chartered Cessna caravan for the flight to the Bali Mountains. Our flight plan takes us over the Rift Valley to the Robi Airstrip. We're reunited with our drivers at the airstrip. They've driven for two days since we left them in Gondor. We drive through Goba and into Bali Mountain National Park. As we drive across the otherworldly Senedi Plateau, we spot our first Ethiopian wolf. We check in at the Bali Mountain Lodge. Our room, number three, is named Ethiopian Wolf. I hope that's a sign we will see more of this rare canid. The Bali Mountain National Park is a big place, encompassing over 530,000 acres. Our starting point is the Bali Mountain Lodge here. The Siniti Plateau is a large area in light green that makes up the better part of the park. It's an Afro-Alpine ecosystem with an elevation of over 13,000 feet. We'll be exploring along the gravel road through the park. The Ethiopian wolf is what we've come to see. It's estimated that there are less than 500 adults in the world, and more than half of them are in the Bali Mountains. They're the world's rarest canid and the Africa's most endangered carnivore. Other wolves are opportunistic feeders, hunting and scavenging a wide range of animals. The Ethiopian wolf is a highly specialized feeder of rodents who live in this difficult alpine environment. Their favorite food, the giant mole rat, is also endangered. But the good news is that here in the Bali Mountains, they can reach densities of more than 10 individuals per acre. While the mole rat is a meal, the grass rat is a snack. They're solitary hunters unlike other wolves. Look closely and you'll see the rats scurrying to their burrows. The wolf is a social animal and lives in family groups of around six adults. We watch this mother feed her pup. Over our three days here, it's been great to watch these wolves living their lives in this fragile environment. But the wolves don't have the place to themselves. Raptors compete with the wolves for rodents. The Ethiopian highland hare competes with the rodents for grass and small birds compete with the rats for seeds. Apart from the rodent-filled valleys that the wolves prefer are the alpine lakes. The giant lobelia give an otherworldly look to the landscape. But when you least expect it, a bright flower will appear. The alpine lakes are home year-round to the blue-winged goose. Their plumage is thick, loose, and fur-like, an adaptation to this cold environment. The spot-breasted lapwing is also endemic to the Ethiopian highlands. Lichen takes on many forms in this extreme environment. And just for the record, we stood on top of Tulu Dimtu, Ethiopia's second highest mountain. And this is how the world below looks from 14,360 feet above sea level. Another important ecosystem in the Bali Mountains is the Harina Forest, shown here in the dark green around our lodge. We're exploring a small corner of the forest, which is one of the few remaining natural forests in Ethiopia. We're hiking to a waterfall. The trail starts in bamboo fence pastures in the village of Rira. The landscape is so different from the stark 
Sinetti Plateau. Abundant rainfall makes for lush vegetation and swift flowing streams. The wetland is home to rare birds like this rail. We head down into the woodland. Monkeys are in the trees. The villagers hang these beehive baskets in the trees. We had some of the tasty honey for breakfast. This is the largest cloud forest in Ethiopia. Millipedes thrive in the rich leaf litter. All kinds of lichen cover the trees. And we found a very picturesque waterfall. The third ecosystem that we are visiting in the Bali Mountains is the Gese grasslands in the extreme north of the park. This dry, grassy woodland is home to the endangered Mountain Nayala. It's one of Bali Mountains National Park signature animals and it's featured on the Ethiopian 10 cent coin. During the civil unrest of the 1990s, the population in the Bali Mountains fell to 150. Current population estimates range from 1,500 to 2,800 animals in the world. Mountain Neala are ordinarily very shy and skittish, but here they've become habituated to walking safaris. While it seems they're doing well here, they are classified as endangered due to habitat loss and illegal hunting. Their range has always been small, basically the montane woodlands with an elevation of 9,800 to 11,200 feet around the Bali Mountains. Now it appears that they are extinct in the eastern and southern extremes of their range. We had the good fortune to have Abdullah, one of the original rangers, as our guide in Gese. He's an expert on owls and he knows where all the roost trees are. Rose Eagle Owl is the largest African owl. We leave Bali Mountain National Park and head to Roby Airstrip to meet our charter flight. But there's bad news. Weather conditions over the Rift Valley make our flight impossible. So it's plan B. We're driving to Awasha in the Rift Valley and then tomorrow we'll fly to Addis and begin our long trips home. But the bonus is we get to see some more of this amazing country. It's been a great trip. We've covered a lot of territory, but there's so much more to see, like the Stella of Axum, the birds of the Rift Valley Lakes, the Aroma people. I guess we'll just have to come back. Thanks to our great drivers. Always a smile, even on long days and rough roads. A special thanks to the Natural Habitat guides, John and Jeff, for keeping us on track and well fed. A very special thanks to our local guides, Gizmo in the Simeon Mountains and Mohammed in the Bali Mountains. Their local knowledge made a big difference. And how can we thank Ashu enough? His encyclopedic knowledge of all things Ethiopian never ceased to amaze. And also thanks to our fellow travelers, for contributing their energy and curiosity to this trip. <laughs>